Welcome to this recording of Further Physics. So if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in looking at certain further stuff that is not covered in the Cambridge A-level syllabus. Well, not strictly necessary. Okay, so in these videos, we will assume that you have already known the main ideas. So I will not spend too much time explaining them. And that you are ready and have enough maths to... Let's go. All right, so as you can see behind me, I have that good old projectile motion again. So essentially what projectile motion is, is actually a 2D motion in free form. So it's a two-dimensional motion in a free form. So in this video, we want to derive common things that matters to us in a free form. Okay, so for example, uh, if I want this to launch this uh, little motorbike up like this, at an angle of theta from the horizontal when I build this ram, let's say this is theta, this is u, how far should I, should it be from the sand dune? So I want to find the range so when it hits the ground. So let's say it hits the ground. Actually, this picture, it will hit the ground somewhere here. Lah. Okay, lah. let's say it hits the ground here. So I want to be able to find the range of the projectile. I also want to be able to calculate the time of flight. How long would the motorbike be in air? So range, time of flight, and I also kind of want to find the maximum height of this from the launching point, hmax. And all this in terms of u, which is the initial launching speed where the motorbike will take off, and theta, which is the launching angle in which I build my ramp. Okay, so before we start, we're gonna do the same thing, list down our kinematics properties. Okay, and because this is in two dimension, we have to resolve into x and y component, which is a bit more of the pragmatic way of approaching this. So we have x and y, and go as t u v a. All right. So I think the first thing I would like to look for is h max. Okay, so I'm going to do one for hmax when this is hmax. And I'm going to do the normal thing where I'll treat upward as positive. And since this one is moving to the left, I'm going to treat the left as positive. Okay. Just for fun, I went and found a projectile that's flipped. Okay. So this is hmax. Upward is positive. You started here. Okay. You ended here. So right now, da, 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 da. Here to here is your H max. Okay? So measured upwards. T will be, let's say the time of flight is capital T. So let's say here T is equal to zero second when you T off, when you launch. And when you land here, T is equal to capital T. So at the halfway point here, T will be equal to T over 2. So meaning this one, I'm going to put t over 2. This one, I'm going to put t over 2. And what else? This range, is it the entire range? No. Lah. If I choose this point here, it is the halfway mark. So this point, all the way measured from the starting position will be r over 2. Okay, I cannot see. Let me change color. This one would be r over 2. Okay, so this one will be r over 2. Purposely one. All right. So what else to do? We need to resolve the vector into the x and y component, not just put s and t. Lah. So right now, we will resolve this u. Okay, u will be at this angle. So I'm going to resolve one component that uh, shoots it upwards. Because it is the component without an angle, this will be u sine theta. Moving up, so it gets a positive u sine theta. Okay, and for the horizontal component, it is right beside the angle theta. So this will be u cos theta. Teacher, when pointing to the left, need to put negative. Uh. No need. Lah. I treated the left as positive. Okay, for convenience sake. Alright, yeah. And also the r is from, is towards the left. So this one will be positive too. So direction, it's really up to you. Okay, depending on what is convenient. Um, I know for sure. So whatever that I write here is confirmed one. It's the same all the time for, for it to be called a projectile motion. You will have a velocity in the x direction that is constant. So the acceleration is zero because there is there is no, no horizontal forces because we are ignoring air resistance. 
no horizontal force okay and this gravity will be acting downwards your g good old gravity is always pointing down g so the vertical force vertical force is equal to mg all right so this is the whole idea of your stuva teacher we don't have v yeah we don't have v do we care about v i mean if you want i can calculate them but we don't have them. But the x v, the x components v is the same. It is u cos theta. Okay. So if you don't know why it's the same, um, you can watch the video. But the short explanation is there's no horizontal forces changing its velocity. All right. So now we're ready to form two equations. Okay. Let's go. So I have copied over the Stuva STUVA list. And now we can choose to form equations. So since I have little information about v, I will actually uh, use the equation of s is ut plus half a t squared. Okay, but now I'm going to first try it out on the x component. So what we're doing here is we're trying to just put in the values and see what it leads, where it leads us. Okay, so this one will be r over 2 is equal to u cos theta time of flight over 2. So right now I have R is equal to U cos theta times T. Okay, so I want to be able to find range in terms of U and cos theta. So I need to substitute my T. Okay, so I put this one side first. We see how later. Okay, second equation that I could form is still S is UT plus half AT square. But this is for the Y component. Okay, so just trying stuff out. Okay. So this will be the maximum height, h max is equal to, you are throwing up at u sine theta, okay? The time of flight here is t over 2, okay? And then plus half negative g, okay? I'm going to keep g as, neg I mean, negative g as it is. I'm not going to substitute 9.81, all right? And this one would be t over 2. This doesn't look very nice, right? You know why? Teacher, um, you see, I don't have T, I don't have U, so I could solve this, but there are too many unknowns. Okay, not suitable. I guess we need to try something else. Is there something we're missing? Yes, there is. Remember? Maximum height here means V is zero, specifically VY. So it's not that we don't know, but it's that it is zero at max height. Oh, this means we can form another equation without T. Because you see this T, oh, yeah, it's so mafan, you know, so annoying. You know, need to square, need to get rid of it. Okay, so never mind. Let's try something else. V square is U square plus 2AS. So we'll do this for the Y component. Okay, put inside, put inside. What, need, what do we need to put inside? So V square is 0, my favorite number. Okay, and this will be u sine theta square plus 2 negative g times h max a i think here can find h max my teacher uh, yes we can from here your h max is actually u sine theta square divided by 2g oh we got one already you remember what was our purpose again? We want to find maximum height in terms of u and sine theta and nothing else. u and theta, nothing else. Teacher, g, le, g everyone know is 9.81. So technically speaking, I can put 9.81 inside, but I won't. La. So this is one equation that we can say, okay, done. So if we're done with this, can we then use h max to help us decide what our t is? The t there is the t here. Yeah, we need to be able to uh, get rid of T so we can substitute here to find the range and also the time of flight. Okay, so I'm going to now substitute this inside. So you may think to yourself, maybe I can substitute the equation for H max into the initial equation that we have right here. But I'll do it for you, but there's a faster way to find T. 
So always remember our purpose. We want to have uh, an equation for H max, which we did check. We want an equation for T, which we are on the way, and then an equation for R. Okay, again, in terms of U and theta. So right now, the reason why I hesitate to substitute this in is because, you see, uh, if you put this one in, you have a quadratic equation. So I try to stay away from quadratic equations because then I would need to divide, you know, I need to do some quadratic manipulation, which I will do, but later. Lah. Okay, so a faster way is actually to use another equation, like V is equal to U plus AT, but this one for the Y component. Then we can compare answers if we want to. So at maximum height, this is zero. Okay, the U was U sine theta. And this is negative g t over 2. Okay, so by this, when I rearrange, uh, I will get g t, grand theft auto, over 2 is equal to u sine theta. And naturally, t will be equal to 2u sine theta over g. Okay, so I already have t, which is the time of flight. How long? Will the projectile, whether it's motorbike or golf ball or baseball or anything that is falling with an arbitrary angle u and theta stay in the air, right? So you may be thinking, teacher, if I put this one inside here, really cannot get it. can. So if you really just want to die on this hill, so to speak, you could also because kinematics is like a multi-part journey. There are many ways to solve kinematics. So uh, it's easier to find T using V is U plus AT because there's no quadratic equation. But if you really want to, I can equate both of this equation. So um, I will say, I'm just going to call this 1 and this one 2. And I'm going to substitute 2 into 1. Hmm, let's see what happens. Take a breath, because we're going to do quadratic equation. Should be fine, right? Right, <laughs> right, I don't know. Okay, anyway, I'll substitute h max, and then I'll get u sine theta, t over 2, plus, but yeah, I can move a bit, huh? let's fix, huh? okay, minus, okay, I'm going to simplify this a bit, g over 2, t over 2 squared. Okay, so very messy. I want to, you know, fix it up a bit. So I'm just going to multiply everything by 2g. Because I don't like fractions and I cannot lie. Okay, anyway, this is u sine theta square. Calm down. Everything is fine. This one will be 2g u sine theta. Teacher, you don't you don't want to cancel with the t over 2. Right? Nope, nope, nope. I'm doing it now. Okay. Mine plus negative g over 2 u times 2g, right? Hang on, hang on. So this will be g square t over 2 squared. Okay, so now we kind of like have this quadratic equation. Okay, you may be thinking, well, there are a few choices to go forward. Lah. This can be substituted with x and then you solve for x. Can. You can also just open up all the brackets and then see what happens, which is what I'll do so now. Okay, so u square sine square theta. I think I'll just keep this in the square bracket. Okay, and uh, this one would be negative g square t square over 4. Okay. This one will cancel off, and so now you will get dun dun, g u sine theta times t. Okay, remember t square, t square and t. You just want to solve the quadratic equation. So I move things around, and I think I'll multiply everybody by four. So when I multiply this one by four, just to get rid of the four, right? This one becomes two u sine theta squared. Okay, the way I did it was, if I multiply by 4, the 4 is outside like that. Ah, then I want to throw it inside. Leh. So if I want to throw it inside, it will be 2, because 2 squared is 4. Okay, multiplying this one by 4, negative g squared t squared, and then plus g u 
sine theta times t. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange, uh, putting t square in front, positive, okay, minus gu sine theta times t, okay, plus 2u sine theta squared. This is equal to 0. So right now, I'm going to factorize one, okay? So I'll factorize the equation. On one side, I will have t. On the other side, I will have t, okay? Then I have to ask myself, oh, oh, my friends, to get g squared t squared, I need to take this thing, multiply by this thing, okay? In order to get g squared t squared. So I'm going to put g and g here. So that this times this, I will get this expression. Because this is the only way to get t squared. You take t, multiply by t. There's no other way to get t squared. Okay? So whenever you want to factorize something, uh, depending on what technique you're used to doing, this is how I do it. I look at the t squared term first and decide how to separate them. Okay? So there's g squared t squared. It's going to separate it that way. All right? And now this is negative. Negative, negative will give me positive. Negative times negative will give me positive. You know why? Because I need to get, I need to arrive at 2u sine theta squared, whole thing squared. Okay, so in that case, uh, I'm going to, hang on, there's a g missing somewhere. Is there a g missing somewhere? I multiply by 2g. Okay, no, no, there's no g. So paranoia, paranoia has ascended. Okay, so now the next part here is this 2u sine theta squared. So I just go like, hey, maybe this will be. 2u sine theta, this is 2u sine theta. But don't take my word for it, check first, okay? So this one times this one, I will get this, all right? But what about the middle term, you ask? Well, we can do a check or we'll do a checking here for the middle term. The middle term is gu sine theta times t, okay? Again, this is all very unnecessary. Yeah? You can use v is u plus at. Your life is going to be easier. But never mind, we're here already. We are too deep, too invested, okay? So let's see. So I've multiplied these two, but I have not yet multiplied um, this one with this one. So if I multiply this way, I'm going to get gt times 2u sine theta. Uh, but this one is gt times 2u sine theta. Yep. Okay. And then if I repeat this one here, meaning I'm going to okay, change color, I'll take the first term multiply by the second term and the second term multiply by the first term. So this one is another gt 2u sine theta. Okay. So it's negative. This is negative. Okay, so when I do that, I will arrive at uh, maybe disappointingly negative four gt because of the two and two. Ah, uh, this two and this two. Negative four gt u sine theta. Teacher, this one no four also. Ayala, because a common mistake of Multiplying everybody by 4 on this row. This row here is that there's a 4 here, but in the excitement of putting these 2 into the square, there's also another 4 here. Ah, So always when you factorize, double check. Don't take it for granted. Also check the middle term. Okay, so when you move positive 4 from this side of the equation to the other side, this will be negative 4. Okay. So yay, done. So this part is a uh, check. Okay, so then hence you could say since this is the uh, same roots, right? So gt minus 2u sine theta is zero. We're looking for t, right? So uh, let me rearrange a bit. We'll get t is equal to 2u sine theta. Bring the g over. Okay, let's check left and right, huh? is it the same? Oh yes, my dear, my dudes, you see? Nah, nah. So just now, I was just showing you some algebraic manipulation. So if you intend to do a little bit more projectile further examples on your own time, just because you want to, um, sometimes being a bit smart in dealing with quadratics is important. And by saying a bit smart, which I will not show in this video, 
instead of taking T over 2 and opening it up and having big numbers with this number 4 that can potentially make mistake, what I'll do is I will substitute T over 2 as X and look for X. And then whatever I have X later, I multiply by 2. So I want to sub T over 2 as X. That will be easier to factorize because the big numbers become smaller. But that's just my technique. If you're okay with big numbers and you don't make as many careless mistakes as I do, this is perfectly fine. If you just want to show off that you can do quadratics, I don't know. Is it, is it a thing? But anyway, I've done checking and I'm pretty satisfied with my T. Okay? So, okay, now this is easier. This is this one now? Yeah. Okay, so you have H max, you have T. Finally, we are ready to talk about range. So we know range, and I'm just going to call this equation 3 out of convenience. And we know T, so I can substitute whatever I got for T inside this one. Okay? So the next step would be, I am going to substitute T is equal to 2U sine theta over G into equation 3, which is R is equal to u cos theta times t. Double check. r is equal to u cos theta times t. Okay, boss, we can substitute now. Hence, r will be equal to u cos theta multiplied by 2u sine theta over g. So we're, we're fairly happy now because this looks manageable, right? This will be 2u squared. Or rather, maybe I should do this 2u, 2u square, right? u times u is u square. So I'll have 2 sine theta cos theta. I'm just going to put the g outside here. Hmm. Hmm. Familiar identity? Is this the double angle equation for some cosine sine identity? Ta-da! I hopped onto the internet and found the double angle equation. Okay, so right now, the one that I will use is this one, sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. See, 2 sine theta cos theta, very nice. So we're going to put this inside. R is equal to u square over g sine 2 theta. Okay, because this whole thing is equal to sine 2 theta. So in finally, we will have r is equal to u squared sine 2 theta over g. So I have arrived at my final equation, which is r. Let's write them all down. Okay, we had h max. And h max was u squared sine squared theta over 2g u square, or rather u sine theta whole thing square over 2g. You have the time of flight, t, which is 2u sine theta over g. You have the range, u square sine 2 theta over g. Now, I don't know about you, but my memory is not the best thing in town. I will not memorize this equation because they, they look too similar. La. Some got two in front, some the two inside the angle, some the two in the denominator, some got square the whole thing, some only u square, some nothing is squared. I stress, ah, stress, okay? So what I normally do is I derive, okay? I just try to tell myself that it is better to choose a quicker equation and I go through the steps pretty quickly if I'm not trying to explain it to someone in the recording. All right, so what's the purpose of coming up with this equation? Well, if you have these equations, right, number one, um, if given any projectile motion, as long as you know the initial conditions, which is u and theta, meaning any projectile at all, uh, golf ball, I whack at six meter per second, dot, 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 dot with the angle of 25 degree, I can just substitute into all of these equations to be able to find how far away will my golf ball travel, how long will it be in air, what's the maximum height of the ball, etc, etc. So these equations are useful, especially if you are doing some form of coding or computing. Or maybe you plan to do game dynamics, you know, maybe game dynamics, game mechanics, you know, maybe you plan to like, oh, I want to design a first-person shooter game, so I want the, the bullet to travel in the trajectory. Computer can do stuva for you. 
computer can go through all this process. But what will happen to a computer is that it'll be very laggy. La. So computer will be happier if you just give them the equation. But that's computer. You have a bigger brain than computer, which means with your big, big brain, you should be able to, when needed, when necessary, derive it. Okay, that's the first application of this. The second application is sometimes I want to ask this question. You know, maybe it's like Olympic. Ah, I want to throw as far as I can. Okay, so I want to know what should my angle be because I cannot change how fast I throw the ball. This one limited by my hand, my strength, you know. But maybe technique can help me decide what should angle be? What should the angle be? Should it be 25? Should it be 30? Should it be 60? What is the best angle so that I get maximum range? So let's park this here. Okay. Anyway, just a note here to write. If initial conditions known. These equations are shortcuts. Um, generally, if you use them, but you use them wrongly, for CIE, you may not get marks because sometimes using the kinematics equation is where the mark is. Not stating this equation, but using this kinematics equation. UAT, uh, B square, U square, 2AS. Uh. Okay, uh. always, whenever you don't know whether a method is suitable or not, check your mark scheme. Okay, so my question now is, what is theta? For maximum range. You want the trajectory to be as far as possible. Okay. So if I look at this, I can't change u square charge beam g. Can't, can't change g. So I can say for the max value, sine 2 theta must be equal to 1. Okay. Because sine 2 theta cannot be more than 1. Now. 1 is the maximum value of any uh, sinusoidal function, sine cosine function. So right now, um, I know that 2 theta will ergo be 90 degree, or you can press your calculator if you don't know this. Then the theta is 45 degree. Okay? So if I want to draw a trajectory, behind okay. my head, okay? And if, let's say, I launch the, ang the trajectory, I have a few different angles, now, okay? So I could launch it at 45, Or I could launch it at uh, 16. Okay, here to here is 16. Or I could launch it at 30. Here to here is 30. I will get different, different range, which makes sense, right? If you launch it at an angle that is too high, what will happen? The trajectory will go very high, up, but it won't go very far because you don't have a lot of horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity is limited. Okay, you could say, okay, now I overcompensate. You know, I draw something that is not as high. If you can, I give a lot of horizontal component. Can, can, can. You will go up and then magically you land at the same spot because you actually need the height so that you have extra time to travel faster. Okay, so the limitation of the blue and the purple track is that blue track, you have too large vertical component. You spend too much time in. You spend too much vertical your velocity. Your vertical component of velocity, this uh, u sine theta. You spend too much of it going up and coming up. Not too much. Not enough of it traveling forward. If you don't travel high enough, then you will spend a lot of the uh horizontal component. But there's not enough vertical component, so you don't spend a lot of time in the air. Time too short write down for you. Lah. So the limitation of case number one, case number one is uh, Vy too large causing Vx to be too small. Okay. Uh, number two, the purple one, this one, oh. this one is Vy too small so then the time of flight, the time of flight or the time that it is in air is too short. Goldilocks. So what do we want? 
we want maximum range. So maybe something like this. This is 45. Like Goldilocks. So 45 is the angle that gives you max range. So that's the first thing. Second thing. Okay. Why does theta equal to 30 degree and theta equal to 60 degree have the same range? Why? Uh? Can we answer using the equation? Can. Because, see, uh, let's say theta is 30 degree. So, sine 2 theta will be equal to sine 60. Okay, and sine 60 is root 3 over 2. But hopefully you're watching this video, you know it's root 3 over 2. But if you don't know, it's 0 0.8 sine 60, which is 0 0.866. Okay, when theta is equal to 60 degree, sine 2 theta will be sine 120. Again, if you know your trigo, this base angle is still 60. So if you press your calculator, sine 120, you also get 0 0.866 uh, root 3 over 2. Hopefully you're watching further physics because you have a bit of maths to play with, okay? So these two have the same range because your sine has the same value for the first and second quadrant. So when you test like that, you see here, so you can infer that this is because sine theta have the same value or same base angle, which is what it is, in first and second quadrant. Okay, this one really need strong math skills, okay? And the final thing is, it's not just 30 and 60. Because of this, and if you understand the unit triangle, this one is for all values of A plus B is equal to 90. So angle A and angle B can be 30 and 60, can be 20 and 70, can be 10 and 80. doesn't matter as long as the angles or value of angles AB equal to 90. All right, you can try it out. Try and see that. Sign 10, you put 10 degree, you put 80 degree, see what happens because that becomes your base angle. All right, your 60 degree is your base angle to theta. Okay, that's a unique property in this case. But, you know, if you're good in maths, you can immediately deduce all of this out. But all this is just extension. The Where does it come from? It comes from manipulating your Stuva equation. For your CIE exam, you don't need to know any of this proof. You need to know how to use the Stuva equation in the scenario given. Paper 2 will give you a lot of values you can substitute. Paper 1 may ask you to derive Okay, one one of these, not all of these, cray cray, one of these. Okay, so if you can derive, great. If you memorize, then you save yourself a few minutes. But good to know that now you know where the equation comes from and what is the implication. Okay, and from this equation, you can deduce a lot of things, right? For example, when theta is big, t is big. When u is big, t is big, etc. etc. I'll leave that up to you. I think my one note is also said, okay, enough for today, enough for this video. Whoops, I hope you learned something in the projectile. In your notes, you can see that we have summarized and placed all the equations at the right place. T and R and maximum height here. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next further physics video. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, good job. Bye-bye.